All right, so we're in a we're in a phase of our development where um, things could be a bit slow in making updates. Uh, we have to wait for the project to either build so that we can run it or emulate it and such. And I was doing run browser, and that still kind of takes a bit of time. There's some things that we want to do at this point that don't really require us for us to really load it as an official app. I want to deal with CSS, which is plain HTML, which means the plain old web browser should suffice. So in Notepad, let's open our index file. Let's open index.html in Notepad. And we're, we're going to do the plain old run Chrome. We were doing Firefox, but we'll just keep it in Chrome. We'll do run launch in Chrome for these things that we're going to edit regarding CSS. This is going to be the quickest way to do it because what we see should be what we get in, in, the, in the device. Obviously, we'll make some changes if it looks good. Uh, we can then further change. Uh, we can further then test it in the real device. But this will be a quick uh, way to test. Run launch Chrome. Uh, a bunch of the features of the project will probably not work, but I don't care about how it works. I care about how it looks. So when we when we load this up, Okay, so instead we'll go run uh, Firefox. That's good because we, we're going to be editing our code and we want to see the result quickly. So um, run Firefox then. We'll be fine with Firefox. Um, if we load up the project, Again, things might not fully work the same. Don't worry about it. It's about the design. Um, speaking of design, if you click, have you been noticing that as you click on the About screen, it still has the old theme, Data Theme A. Now, if your colors look correct, that's because you've used Theme A. Uh, I used Theme B and C for my, uh, for my design. So mine's wrong. This is still in the plain old gray. If yours is correct, just uh, just follow along for a moment. But if yours is wrong, like mine, here's what we need to do. This particular screen then doesn't have doesn't have any data theme attached. So we need to find that home screen. I'm sorry, that about screen in our project. There is a section with ID equals about. We need to find the about screen in our project. So I'm going to search for about, but quote about, because there aren't really any other places in my project, I believe, that have about with quotes, about lowercase. Hopefully it jumps you to line 248 section, data role page, data dialog, true, ID, about. There's no other place in my app that has ID equals about. There can't. That's the whole point of using IDs. If I had simply searched for about, it'll probably take me to two or three other places in my, in my project because I might have used the word about other ways. Let me tell you about the college. So that's why I'm being more specific. Quote about. There's only one place in my whole app that has quote about. So we're in the right place, uh, line uh, 248. After data dialog, let's add data-theme. And again, only add this if your about screen does not look correct. Mine doesn't, because I need data theme B. You don't need to specifically say data theme A. That's the default. Um, I'm sorry, how many lines you have? Like, what do you uh, 
I mean, my about is at six, like 64. 64. Yes. Well, that's the about button. We want to go to make sure that we're in the about section. So to see if that worked, I'm just going to simply run it in Firefox quickly because it's just a quick change in CSS. Go to About, and it's getting there. I have now the yellow colors instead of the plain old gray. It didn't do this green background like I wanted, although it made my text white. So it did make it white text on a, on a background. Like here, I've got white text on a green background, but for some reason, the green background is not showing up here. So let me try something. I might have to explicitly add data theme a couple more times. For example, to article. Uh, let me just try this and then we'll see if it worked. But that's why we can quickly check Firefox if you remember the keyboard shortcut. Not quite. So probably what's going to happen is we're going to need to add some extra CSS, which is what we're getting to anyway. Um, so I'm just going to leave I'm not going to add that data theme to article. I'm just going to leave it in the section. Uh, I think there's other things at play because also this is a dialog box. So probably that dialog box has some built-in CSS that we are not overriding very easily. <clears throat> no problem. When we get to our custom CSS, we'll, we'll deal with that. But I'm close. This is close enough. We'll fix that green background very soon. But I've got that color. Speaking of wrong colors, if you go to the PC screen and then you look at these PC screens, that's got the old colors as well, in my case. So I need to do the same thing. I need to find those sections in my code and add data theme B. So starting first with intro, my intro to computers has an address of Basecom. So I could do find, control F, quote BASCOM. Uh, case should not matter unless we activate match case. If I turn on match case, it will not find it because Basecom is with a capital C. But I'm not usually using match case. So I'm going to search for base. Cam next, there it is, line 223. Section, base com, oh, and there's the other ones, int com, advanced com. So, same thing, data roll, after data roll, I'll add data dash theme equals B. I'm going to do that a couple more times, so I'm going to copy that and paste it. But now my basic computer screen has that theme because they all automatically have A. Again, when we were at Theme Roller, I made my design in B and C, my, my, my unique colors. I put them in B and C. That's why I have to do this. If you put your unique colors in A, then it's done because it'll use A automatically even if you don't mention it. Then on line 231, I'll also add data theme B to my intcom, intermediate computer classes. And then line 240, advanced com. I will save and run Firefox. PC, good. Intermediate, good. Advanced, good. Further testing it, I see that my sidebar needs some editing. So you guys help me now. Where's my sidebar? What line? No, that's the collapsible set, but it's close to those lines. What I did was, I know that on this section it says August, September, October. So 
So I searched for August 84. Is that 10 of the sides? What's that? Exactly. The, the aside is right there, line 80. So let's go to line 80. Aside, data roll panel, data display overlay, art cal. Uh, I'm going to add uh, data theme here, so I'll add it. Notice how I'm usually adding it before the ID. I like to add ID as the very last item, doesn't really matter, but so we'll add data theme B before the end of the aside code, line 80. Well, it made my button made my button yellow. That's cool, but uh, the rest of this didn't quite change. Well, again, we'll get to that with with, with our custom CSS. All right, so did everyone uh, do that that needed to do it? Okay, so let's, um, let's deal now with some, some custom CSS. Uh, you should load your project in, in Firefox, just like I've got it here. Just from Notepad, just run Firefox. I want to tighten up this space a little bit between the header and the, the top text. So here we will use the element inspector. So you want to right click, welcome, and select inspect element. That's the same as F12 basically on the keyboard. And we get inspector. So this particular element, welcome right here. So we'll do a quick crash course in this element inspector again. Remember, uh, you, you want to make sure that you're on the inspector tab here. We've got console and others. You want to make sure you're in an inspector. Um, that I've highlighted that element. If yours is not highlighted, you need to turn on this little, this little pick an element from the page button, this little arrow on a square. If you click that, then things will highlight when you put your mouse on them. And I've highlighted that particular element, and it'll show up in the code right there, H2. It's inside an article, so there's our HTML. And then on the right side is all of the CSS that governs that element. Most of it is built in to... Um, to jQuery mobile or other things. So on the right side we see here a bunch of code, colors, text shadow, etc. And the way we read this is that there's going to be some CSS selector. I'm just going to stretch it out to see it very obviously. But here there's UI dash overlay B comma, UI dash page theme B comma, 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 curly brace, and then it says color, white, text shadow. That is a rule that is a CSS selector that is being saved to the mystyle.min.css, which we got from Kodik, uh, no, we got from Theme Roller. Theme Roller, when we designed our colors, it came into that. Below that, you're going to see the cascade of cascading style sheets, CSS. The top most here takes precedence over everything below it. And you might see some that are crossed out because something new has superseded it. So something very similar is next, overlay, page theme, page theme, panel, wrapper. It's just about the same thing. 
it's the same thing, but this is crossed out, and this is taking over because it's higher. And so the original jQuery mobile file said, make that text white with a little drop shadow, a text shadow. But then my style said, no, make it white with a with that color, slightly different. So then that's why this takes over. Further down, what else do we have? Inherited from body, so there's body that's coming from there again. Font size is there. Body stuff that's crossed out because something else takes over. And then all the way back here, these are crossed out as well. So that's um, that's the anatomy of this screen. We've seen it briefly before, but now we'll use it to our advantage here because that HTML element is taking up way too much space. It's got either too much padding or too much margin. Usually those are the two things that we deal with when something seems like it's taking up too much space, either padding or margin. So we will use this element inspector as a sandbox to figure out what should I change. Once I figure that out, then I have to write it permanently in my CSS file in Notepad. This is just uh, a playground, a sandbox. It's not, it's not permanent. So what I mean is, if you see here where it, where it says my style color white and you click that color and say actually I want that color red and everything changes red, but it's not permanent. As soon as I refresh, it goes back to normal. This is just giving me an idea of what I can do. Just so that we're all on the same track. Make sure you've clicked the pick element and you've clicked on welcome. I've clicked on welcome and it tells me then on this bar at the top here, you've selected H2. If it says something else there, you didn't select it. Make sure you've clicked on that H2. This little tab right here is also very useful. This also explains to you in another way what element is inside of an element or what element is governed by another element because CSS honestly is complicated. There's a lot of pieces interlocking. One rule might affect another rule. One rule might supersede another rule. That's what we're seeing here on the right side with the things crossed out. And so I may, I may define a, a rule in my CSS file that says h2 padding 0. And it might not do anything because article.ui could be taking over. Or the next one up here, home UI page, could be taking over. So this is a, is a pretty complex looking screen to work with a pretty complex topic of CSS. But it's a great way to learn and to experiment what to do. One of the tips that I can give is, as we look on the right side over here, you're going to see some rules that are bold and some that are not. And this is the same in Chrome. Some of them are going to look like faded out, and some of them will look like they're selected. So that's a hint that out of these four possible, or these three possible rules, it looks like UI page theme B is the one that really controls that element. UI overlay B is looks deactivated, so it's not. It's probably not controlling it. Um, UI page theme B is the one probably controlling it. That's giving me a hint of what I'm going to need, probably, possibly need to write in my in my CSS. And then usually in this element inspector at the very top, there's element, which is the most inline element. So let's try this. Click inside of the inline element somewhere there. It should pop open like that, and it says, okay, add some CSS. Let's add here padding. Start writing padding, and it'll say, do you mean padding? Press tab. And then let's write just for fun. 55px. What happens? 
lots of padding. It moved in from the edge. It pushed things down, it pushed things from the top, it pushed things from the left. How do you get the inherent from the section hole? How do you think that the thing is the It's either going to be there or not, and it should be there because you've, you've clicked this picker and then you clicked on home. Uh, welcome, yes, you, you need to click on welcome. So what happened here is on this deepest element, which is H2, I added padding 55, which is obviously over the top. So if instead I change that to 25, you see it changes dynamically at this point. What I like here, especially when trying to figure out these, these sizes and such, is this, this little trick. I like to, for example, I typed 25, but I can then use the arrow keys on my keyboard. I can press down and move it down incrementally or move it up. So make sure the, the value is, is clicked on and then the arrows will work. So you do the arrow keys up and down to add or remove one pixel or one percent. If you want to jump in increments of 10, you can hold shift and press up. Then it'll go from 20 to 30 to 40 to 50. Without shift, they just go individual pixels. So if I was at 55 and then I'm decreasing it, I'm at 55. I'm decreasing it. Okay, it's getting closer and closer like I want. Then eventually I get to zero, and then I can actually go to negative numbers. But then it's not bringing it closer. So it's actually then probably not going to be padding. What are the two things that I, that I said a little while ago? It might be padding or margin. So instead what I'm going to do is... Um, if you backspace that to delete it, just uh, backspace it and delete it, and instead we can type margin, I'm going to start with zero. Right away when I put zero, it jumped up. I don't have as much empty space. You don't have to put units. Zero is zero. You don't really put zero pixels. It's just zero, although it's not... I think it should still work with zero pixels, but I believe the standard says you don't need a value under when you use, uh, you don't need a units when you use the zero value. I'm just going to put zero. Press enter. So now, we, so now it looks like margin set to zero is going to help eliminate some of that extra space. Why doesn't it eliminate all the extra space? Well, we also have to take into account this paragraph here and this navigation bar up there. These also have their own sorts of paddings and margins. And this is what I'm saying about it. it's a puzzle. I, I right now I worked with one piece of a puzzle, but that's next to another one and another one. So then if I want to fully refine what I'm going for, I have to edit the other pieces of that puzzle, usually something above and below. But I think this is better than before. It doesn't have so much empty space here. And so, again, this is all just temporary. If I refresh this, it goes back to normal. To make this permanent, we need to write that code in our CSS file. So before we go further to help us uh, more define our project, let's open from our project folder, let's open the codica.css file. We've been working with the index and the dir file, but now let's open the codica external.css file.
And here's some of this custom code that we've written previously last month. So to, to write this permanently in our CSS file is the goal. Um, and the confusing part is, you might think, well, okay, all I have to do in my, in my code there is write element and then padding or margin zero. No, unfortunately, element is just sort of like this is scratch paper. This is a possibility of what you're going to write in CSS to edit that element. But this here is telling me a little bit more actually what I need to do because I've got a heading 2 inside of UI content class. Remember the dot is a class. And that's, a, and that's inside of an article. So what this is telling me is in my code here at the very end, line 22, Let's write dot UI dash content H space H2 space curly brace close curly brace. And there's no way for me to really say it nicely. This is hard. This is going to take practice. If you're really going to customize things with CSS, you need to pay attention to several things in this screen. You might say, well, why didn't you write completely article.ui content? Um, I might need to, I might not. This is a starting point here to then write it there. I'm not writing it yet because to me logically and in my experience, this heading two is part of this class um, so I'm going to add then uh, margin zero, just like I had in the in the in the, in the inspector, because it's a it's just a quick check in Firefox. Then I can see was this correct. So you want to save this and your HTML file and then run it in Firefox. Run the index file in Firefox. There's before, there's after. So it worked. I'm going to confirm. Uh, I'm going to try to add it just like I saw it down there article.ui content. Just to just to confirm. Seems to be the same thing. There's before any changes, there's without article, there's with article. Question? Yeah, in the uh, left hand window of the inspector, console, yes. It shows um, h2 style equals margin zero. So you could do that in your. Your HTML as well, HTML. Where? Where does it show it? Um, let, but let me cut you off. Uh, you could do it in inline, but if you do it inline, it will only apply to that, to that one spot. We did it via CSS, and now when I go to art, we've got that space also, and we go to PC, we've got that space. If we did it in line, it would only apply to the welcome, not to any other screen. So we're just adding the, uh, the margin is equal to zero to uh, already to make anything Yeah, these are pre-made classes. There's article, first of all, which is the tag of that section. And then there's the class UI content, which is built in to jQuery mobile. That comes from jQuery mobile. UI dash something is usually jQuery mobile. And then h2, because it's a heading 2. If we didn't say h2 here, if we said p, now it would apply to all paragraphs in UI content. If we said image, then it would apply to all images in UI content in an article. So um, you'll um, recommend to, to put the name 
put an icon, which is a section in the, in the main way. Either way worked, but I would recommend to be as specific as possible when necessary because um, the more specific we are, the more we're sure something will work. The problem with being too specific is now this will not apply to the aside, for example, because the aside is aside. So if that was aside, UI icon H2, now that would apply to the aside. But if we didn't write anything, it would apply to an aside or a section. So this is what I'm saying about this, this puzzle. It's all interrelated. So what should we write here? I'm going to leave it without the without article, because like I said, we want to be specific as specific as we can, but then when it's detrimental to us, not so specific. If we did do article, this code would only apply to something that's in that's in article. If we uh, don't add this, it would apply to anywhere there's an H2 inside of a UI content, which could include an aside. And, the, and this calendar over here is an aside. I think that's the only way, that's the only place that we use the, this class though. UI content? Yes, that's the only place we use this class in the editor. No, well, the thing is, we never wrote UI dash content. We we wrote, well, did we? I mean, we, we, no, we didn't write it, but, but I'm saying we, it's the only place we use this class, this pre made class. It's the only place we use it. Of it's UI, UI content. Oh, that, that's right, see, 124 yeah. class UI dash content. Um, there are, unfortunately, though, some places where we don't write it, but it's automatically there as well. Um, there's a lot of things in, in jQuery Mobile that get added for us. That's why jQuery Mobile looks so nice as soon as we use it. It's got a lot of this built in. We had to do UI content here because it's the newer version 1.4. Uh, back on jQuery 1.3, uh, we were using data role equals content. So in any event, what I'm going to recommend then in our Codica file here, let's leave it as UI da, uh, dot UI dash content h2. Now, now we don't have all that empty space above the the, the heading twos over here. No, I think it'll still understand the intent. It's just that the specification doesn't really need the px. <coughs> Now one thing that you may or may not have noticed, uh, and we might not really see it on this document, but if I had this, you don't have to do this, but let me show you something here. Let's see I had let's say I had my SDCE amazing app. Let's just let me show you this. Let's say we had that written up here. And depending on the size of the depending on the size of the display, the viewport, here it looks fine, I can see the full name. But what if we had like a phone that was tall and thin? At a certain point it would cut off. So this is part of jQuery Mobile that there's some built-in padding that we never controlled. And at a certain point the text at the top gets cut off. Um, so that's something that I want to address because actually it's not a it's it's not a problem down on the footer. See, I'm squishing the whole page and down the footer, even down here looks fine. And I I it's not cutting out here. I want the same thing to happen on the header than the footer. So again, we're going to use the element inspector to figure out what do we need to do here. So just to make this obvious, uh, let's go back to line 30. And let's, let's write a longer line here. Let's write SDCE Amazing App. We're not going to keep that, but I just need to see something big there so that I can make a decision on how to edit this. So go to line 30 and just add a little more text.
go ahead and run it in Firefox, load up the inspector and point at that element so that we can figure out what we need to edit. Okay, let's see. So, if we pull that up in Firefox, right click inspect element. Okay, so this little bar down here at the very end, basically you want to read it from right to left. Right is specific, left is generic. So on the, on the rightmost part of that uh, little bar, it says h1.ui-title. Remember, we've always been using h2, h3, and h4 for the main content areas, and h1 for the header. So that's why that says h1 and then UI-title. We never wrote UI-title, but that's just built into jQuery Mobile because when you add any text up on a header section, it'll automatically add UI-title. Then it's got inside of something UIHeader.UIBarB.UIHeader fixed, blah blah blah, it cuts off. You hover over and it'll tell you the whole thing. And that's inside of another thing, and that's inside of another thing, etc. On the right side, it's also telling me about the same thing. UI header, UI title, comma, UI footer, UI title. And then I'm seeing here, font size, minimum height, text alignment, display block, margins, padding, text overflow, ellipses. That's the secret right there. Text overflow. When the text flows out of the prescribed margins, replace the, re replace the text that overflows with ellipses. What are ellipses? Ellipses. Dot, dot, dot. Those three dots. So text overflow ellipses. What about that 30% of margin? Perfect. That's the next thing to look at. Well, what is the maximum amount before I overflow? It's right here, margin. 0, 30. Remember when we have two values of, of a margin, well, let's back up. When we have any margin or padding, we have four sides. Remember the box model. Top, right, bottom, left in that order. Clockwise. Top, top, right, bottom, left. Clockwise. And so here it only listed two values. What did I say a long time ago about when two values are listed based on those four sides? Top, right, right, right. The first one is the top and bottom and the second is the left and right. So it's saying top and bottom, no padding. Um, no margin. Left and right, 30%. So it's eating 30% on the left and the right, and therefore we have a small space to display this top. So what about if we do this? I'm going to, I'm going to have it shrunk like that, and I'm going to edit my code here in my scratch pad. What if I change that to 10%? margin 0 and 10 percent. Now it's not cutting off. So we have jQuery Mobile, which out of the box is really nice. We're always usually going to need to uh, customize things. That's the CSS. The procedure to do that, this is one procedure, the element inspector to reverse engineer what's there and write our own custom code. So in this case, you say, okay, well, we'll do h1.ui-title. Um, but again, trial and error, and I've already trialed it and errored it. So actually what's going to work is this, UI 
dot UI dash header space dot UI dash title because it's highlighted and not that one. So in our CSS, we're going to write that. Let's back up to our CSS file at the very end. Line 26, dot UI dash header space dot UI dash title. And um, based on what was there, margin colon zero, 10% might be good. We could put zero, zero. We could put simply zero. We'll say no margin anywhere, top, right, bottom, or left. That could work. Uh, we could have a really long name, um, and it wouldn't cut it, but just uh, that's a decision that can be made later. So I'm going to leave it as uh, 0 and 10%. That gives me a good amount of space still for a longer title, um, but I still have some protected area so that the dot dot dots could, could be... Uh, could be implemented, the ellipses. And notice, uh, notice I don't have to include all of those items there. I only targeted one thing, margin. I only want margin to be superseded by my custom code. Everything else will still cascade, will still be inherited, such as the font size and other things. So now if I save, save that and run my index, and then shrink my screen. There's before, and there's after. before it had 30% margin and therefore all of this space on the left empty and the right and then now with 10% it doesn't cut off exactly so if we if we are curious and go back to f12 we will see then is that, is that overridden Yes, it's overridden by what we wrote. Now, notice what we see on the right side. UI dash header blah 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 codica dot extra. So oh, okay. that's higher up. That's overriding the thing below it, which was saying, let's make it 0, 030. And we said, no, let's make it 0 and 10. And uh, because codica is defined after the built-in jQuery, then it takes takes over. In, uh, in Notepad, remember this, we've got line 19. Line 19 is saying 10, uh, saying 0 and 30%. But then we say down here, no, 0 and 10%. So it does go in order. It does everything in this section, then this, then this. And because this is the last one, it takes precedence over all of those. That's why some things might be crossed out.
Okay, uh, let's say we want to change the size of the fonts a little bit. The main fonts, they're, they're a bit small. Uh, I tested it on different devices and I felt, well, the font is okay, H2 looks nice, but the regular paragraphs look a little small. So um, that's, that would be my next task, to figure out what, should, what CSS should I write to increase the size of my font. So I have my project loaded up again in Firefox, and I did inspect, and I pointed just to this text right here, and it says it's P paragraph. So it's P, it's inside of UI content, etc. And then if I look on uh, the, the right side rules, um, my another tip that I can say about, well, what do I know what to change? Um, you want to look you want to see what's the tag here. You also want to see what's highlighted here, as I've said. But now what you want to look is look, look down the list and see where do you see a, 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 an attribute that is what you are trying to change. I'm trying to change the font size, the size of my font. So under UI page theme B, there's no mention of that. There's color and text shadow. If I scroll down, you've got UI page theme B, which is superseded. If I keep going down, I've got body, font size, 1M. So that gives me an idea of what I might need to change. I might need to change the body tag, font size. Well, to further, do, to further confirm is that the right code, I just make a change here because this is temporary. Instead of 1M, I can do 2M. I don't know what an M is, but I'll put 2Ms. Oops, that's what an M is. Uh, you want to click the little picker on your paragraph. Just the word our mission, for example. Scroll down and eventually you'll see inherited from body. body. And then font size, we'll put 2M for the moment, which is obviously outlandish. But M's, think about them like percentages. 1M is 100%. 2 M's is therefore 200 percent. The units here are M's, whereas we've dealt with units of PX, pixels, and units of percentage. We could put 100 percent as well instead of 1 M. Well, the thing further about M's is M's are defined by the letter M of your font. That letter M right there, fulfillment, that's 1 M. So Based on the letter M of the font, if we have a really small, thin letter M, then proportionately, two M's will be different than the M on this font, which seems to be like a plain old Arial or Helvetica or something. So I'm going to put that back to 1, because maybe a 1.25. We can do percentages, or we can do fractions, that is, 1.25. That's a little bit larger, a little bit easier to see, I think. So we're getting an idea. I'm going to need to edit font size and put 1.25. I'm still not quite sure, however, am I going to write in my CSS body font size 1.25? That'll probably work. But body is one of the deepest elements, isn't it? Body is there, and then everything goes on top of it. So if I use body to change font size, Logically, I would think that's going to change the size of the paragraphs and the headings and the headers and the text up here. I may or may not want that. <coughs> that's, but be aware of that body is one of these things that covers everything. So remember what I said about be specific when you need it or don't when you don't need it. I might be too generic with body. So because I can quickly test this, uh, I'm going to go back to the CSS. Go to the very end, and I'll start first with P, paragraphs. Because the inspector was also saying, in this case, there's a P. 
font-size colon 1.25 em. No space between the, the value and the unit. Well, let's see if that did what I wanted. So we'll run the Firefox. 1.25m looks a little larger, a little more readable. That's good. Maybe now it looks a little too large compared to the welcome. OK, so the cool thing is that every time you do run Firefox, I, I see some of you, you, you just go back to your browser and you refresh, and that's good. But if you do run Firefox every time, you get a version of your code before you made a change, kind of like a history. So in any event, I've got this one with only P of 1.25 M's. Uh, just to check it out, I'm going to instead say, okay, well, what if instead that was a body? and then I'll run Firefox. That's going to pull up a version of my code with the latest changes and leave an old version. There's the old version. Only the paragraph has 1.25. This one then has body and now also welcome became larger and the other things. More in proportion. I kind of like that a little better perhaps. So with this trial and error it seems that body might work better all the text in my app make it just a little bit bigger because these devices are really high quality but that often means small text so 100 percent or 1m size text is actually often a little too small so 1.25 1.1 maybe even 1.05 you know a little larger than one which is normal <coughs> might, might give you better results i haven't loaded it to my device yet but during doing this testing, oops, doing this testing in Firefox is giving me quick ideas. Is this working? So after all of this work of making a bunch of changes, I want to save all of this and I want to see what it looks like on my device now. So I will run it on Android now. So I say you decide to put in your own, you decide a body instead of the Firefox. Say so change. It changed. You see, here it is only on paragraph. Text looks larger, and now welcome doesn't look so big, so impressive. And then now with on body, welcome has also increased to be in a good proportion to body, uh, to paragraph. I'm kind of liking body better, so that's the one I did. I left it on body. <clears throat> Okay, so then I'm running it in my, in my real device, and I see that it does look larger, a little bit more readable, a little nicer.
We're getting close to the end of the day, so we'll do one more CSS thing and then we'll wrap up. I want to work with this about screen. This about screen, um, white text on a white background, not so good. So you want to open your about screen in Firefox and then just right click to inspect any section back here. Let's see if we can figure out how to change that background color. Okay, so what I wanted to do is figure out where do I change or how do I find out to change that color. I got the little picker and I kind of hovered my mouse over a few places. If I hover over somewhere around there, I, I possibly see a box, but then it wouldn't include the rounded corners. So I'm still kind of hovering around where should this be at. If I click there on the edge, it seems that that's article class main article UI content and then on the right side I'm browsing around UI corner all well that's just for the corners it seems it's roundness of the corner so it doesn't seem right scrolling down UI dialog contain UI content maybe UI content. So I've got a couple of places where I might think about changing the code. Color is text color, remember, and I don't really see anything that says background color. So I just thought about, well, this makes sense, UI-dialog. This is a dialog box, so maybe editing this, I see display, position, width, and margin. I don't see anything about background color. But we are able to edit this however we want. So if you click after margin, for example, it says, okay, what more CSS do you want? I'm going to write background dash color and just pick any color. Remember, pink is quick to type. There we go. So it looks like this particular section is what I need to edit so that I get a color there. So in the CSS, we're going to write dot UI dash dialog dash contain greater than dot UI dash content and then background color. Um, right now because it's a bit late, I'm blanking on what the greater than means. We can look it up. But this is saying basically this seems to be the right place to edit the color. So in my code here, at the very end, I'm going to add Actually, you should be able to copy and paste that if you found it, but you're going to paste, or you're going to write dot UI-dialog dash contain space greater than space dot UI-content space curly braces and we're controlling the background dash color and we need to get your exact background color, that green. Oops. 
So if you were using my project with my green colors and such, um, using the background color yellow green seems to seems to work well. If you've got your own colors, um, you'd have to get back into theme roller, I guess, and find your color. Uh, pull up your color of your of your backgrounds and, and then plug the color in here. Oh, I'm sorry. Quickly, how do you uh, go to uh, how do you go to the, the because it's my my console still stay at the same previous page. It doesn't move when you click on the about page. What I would do is your your console is still probably in the mode of selecting a color or selecting an element. So just go ahead and click anywhere to select it and then hopefully you should be able to to click it. One thing that I notice is that the the logo is transparent, so we see through it to the background color. Maybe I want that picture to be that to have a white background. So if you copy what you just wrote and paste it, background color white. The line up here is saying basically your content, oh, I remember, I believe it means child, um, your UI content is a child of the dialog box and therefore give its background color green. Well, over here we're going to say, well, we've got an image inside of the content which is a child of contain and we want that to be white. So if we then say UI content space IMG because the image is shown as an IMG tag. And so now we force the white color onto that image. Because it was transparent. We put a background color behind the transparent image, so we see white. Um, the white is obviously very close to the text, a little too tight. How do you think we can fix that? Padding 25px, maybe? Look at that. There was no... that picture was not designed with those pixels there. We, we invented them with a little CSS. And then to show off one more final thing, then we'll wrap up. Border dash radius five pixels. A little bit of roundness. So you should be seeing here the power of, of CSS. It can uh, alter that basic black and white project pretty extensively, pretty specifically. But again, that's that's hard. Remember, last month we spent the whole day on CSS, and that was the tip of the iceberg. CSS is pretty complex, especially when we start with a framework that is already fully defined, and we want to change something about it. It's like we've got a car, and now we've got to learn what to change inside the engine. Uh, maybe we have a mechanic helping us. That's kind of what this inspector is. It's still very, very self-serve, self-service, but this with practice and time and effort, this starts to make sense. And uh, here's this result at this point. Um, there's still more that we can customize, but we're just out of time for the day, and I think we've, we've accomplished things pretty well. I'm going to run that on my emulator so that I've got a new version of it. 
and uh, general questions at this point. How will you work on the math again next week? Um, well, I'll try to see over the weekend if I, if I have some more leads to fix that because I do want to use the content security policy. Worst case scenario is we don't, but it still works. But it's, it's working in my browser, it's not working on my actual device. And, and you did remove the, I mean, you did comment out that line? That, that happened to a couple of people. It's working on mine and on most people, but for a couple of devices it didn't. And that might be also other, other aspects of the app. We never really tested for an internet connection or not to really troubleshoot that. So those are other things that we should think about to really make it work. So I think we, we can get back to it depending on our, our time. But... Um, That's on track pretty well. So this whole month then has been a lot of focus on setting up the tools, setting up the software, getting this workflow, and um, there's been a lot of stumbling blocks and so forth, but um, if anyone ever tells you it's easy to make an app, leave, laugh and leave lol then leave so um, it takes time it takes effort but together we're building these tools and this tool set and this workflow to create an app to create a mobile website and such and it might not be the next um, it might not be the next Facebook and such but you're gonna have these tools when we talk about more plugins like social media and such to uh, to make something interesting um, so we'll end at this point, and when we come back next week, it'll be a brand new class. We're going to need to enroll again, new syllabus, new handouts and such. Uh, I don't think there will be a lot of new people that want to take suddenly part three that didn't take part one and two. So you probably don't need to show up that, that early to beat people, but if you want your favorite chair, you know, be on time. Uh, first come, first serve, as always. When we come back next time, we'll do part three. More customization probably, database stuff, and then finishing the project, creating an, a developer account, publishing it, publicizing it, then doing a version 2 update, and then we'll, we'll be app developers with a fully published app. So thanks for coming and I'll see you next week.